Good morning, friends. How good to be with you on this Advent Sunday. I'm going to read to you uh, a couple of verses from our Gospel reading and then pray. Jesus said, But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, uh, an autumn or two ago, I spent a very pleasant week with our family on the island of Arran, off the west coast of Scotland. It is, as you may know, a lovely spot, especially in the vivid, heathery dampness of autumn. On our last morning, during a lazy lunch hour in an art gallery, we casually mentioned to its owner that we were catching the three o'clock ferry. Are you sure? She replied, adding that the only ferry from the island that day was leaving in 45 minutes time. We checked and she was right. Our luggage was back at the farmhouse 45 minutes away and we had a flight to catch back home. So we tore off, making breathless phone calls to our hosts who generously offered to gather our bags and speed over to meet us at the ferry terminal. It was just about possible, even in an old Ford Mondeo. And so it was that with literally 30 seconds to go, uh, the mooring ropes being untied around us and the horns sounding on the ferry that uh, <laughs> my brother-in-law's car screeched up to the terminal. They chucked out our bags onto the pavement and we dashed up the gangplank, uh, breathing out breathless thanks to the crew. Be aware, keep alert. Jesus says, you don't know when the time has come. There's nothing quite like the panic of getting the time wrong, um, which is really the, the, the panic of being unprepared. We all know it and we feel it <laughs> somewhere around here in our stomach. When we know the time, if we're an organized kind of person, we prepare accordingly we make sure we're, we're ready to leave. Advent is the Christian's departure call, in a way. It's our boarding announcement, our departure call, a sonorous foghorn blasting into the winter gloom. Are you ready? It demands of us. Are you living in such a way that when the kingdom comes, your life is in a fit state. It's meant to be challenging. Challenging in the same way that the cry of John the Baptist was challenging to the Jewish people on the verge of Jesus' ministry. It's a call to get our lives ready, to repent, turn round, sort our house out. And in our Advent readings, familiar at this time of year, this is the theme, the Lord is coming, there is something arriving which will change everything. And Jesus says, look at the signs, you know when you look at the trees around you, like the fig tree, you know when it bursts into leaf, you know that summer is on the way. So look at the signs of the times and what they're telling you, where they're leading you and act accordingly. Goodness me, how we need to read the signs of our own times. 
I know that in our own culture, Advent has changed into a sort of enjoyable, if uh, a frantic, time of preparation for Christmas. And it is that too. It's so that's what we are particularly and practically getting ready for. And in this extraordinary and uncertain year that we've been ha having, it, it will be all too easy for this to just become heightened because plans have changed so much that we've we've had to hold back. And you'll have been doing this in, in, in your churches. Just what can we do? What, we ca what can't we do? And then once there is now a little bit more clarity, uh, can we... Do we do plan A and plan B? <laughs> do we do it all? Or do we cut some things? And we've only got a couple of weeks to, to get ready. And once again, we find ourselves on the back foot like we've been all year. So it will be very easy and understandably so for all of that immediate, essentially short-term preparation to dominate the next month. But as Christians, we must uh, look a little further and we must hear the the distant call and the different alert of Advent. It's all too easy to spend it being distracted uh, and, and urgently preoccupied with, with the wrong things at this time of year. But where our heart is, there our uh, time will be. And where our busyness is, our mind and our mood and our money will follow. So the word Advent, as you probably know, means arrival. It's, it's our preparation for divine arrival. Yes, in the immediate sense of Christmas coming, but principally in, in the second coming of Christ. Not an easy theme to either imagine or to communicate in our own time and place. Not a a simple, perhaps, area of church doctrine, so it's tempting to leave it on one side. Hard enough for many to believe that the first coming has happened without bothering with, with the second. And so despite the warning signs around the globe that, that human actions, our actions, have eternal consequences, despite our deep-seated longing, too, that there will one day be a, be a time of reckoning, between good and evil, when things are sorted out and balanced, we comfort ourselves as best we can with the distractions of festivity, and I, I do it as much as anyone. We've spent the year trying to keep alert, but this Sunday we have a different kind of alert. Alert to eternity, to God's life, arriving in the here and now, which it does whenever we turn to Christ. This is the, the mystery of our faith, that when we turn to Christ, we are turning to, uh, to eternal life, to life that lasts, in other words, life that is of a different order or a different kind of endurance from the, the usual things. Like you, the trees wither and fade away, the cycle of the seasons. We know that, we're familiar with that, eternal life. This says Jesus, a never failing stream, a, well, a welling up that doesn't run dry. It just lasts. Faith, hope and love, these things last forever. This is our eternal wake up call to invest in, to pursue those things that have eternal value and the Lord that, that leads them and from whom they all, all come. The fountain of our eternal hope. So let's hear the foghorn and wake up to where we're heading and who we truly serve. And may the Lord lead our onward journey in hope and peace. God bless you. Amen.